Zach McGovern here for DetailedImage.com, and today I'm going to walk you through a two-step paint correction process. We're in the shop here today with this really cool 1937 Ford Coupe. The paint is covered in swirls and scratches, and the owners brought it here for us to correct it in order to remove as many defects as we can with a two-step paint correction process. Now this process starts with a heavy cutting compound and pad, and is then followed with a finer polish and a finer pad in order to remove defects and then restore clarity. I'm going to walk you through the process now so you can repeat this at home. We're going to start today using the Boss G21 polisher, a Meguiar's microfiber cutting disc, and some D300 microfiber cutting compound. Now this process is going to remove the swirls and scratches in the paint, but since this is a jet black vehicle and the paint is pretty soft, we're seeing quite a bit of micro marring and haze left over. Before we begin, we want to make sure that our pad is centered on the backing plate so we have a smooth operation while we're polishing. Next, we're going to prime our pad to ensure that all the fibers are covered in product and we're not dry buffing on the paint. So now that we've got your pad and polisher all set up, let's discuss some of the main variables that are going to affect your correction process. When you're working against the paint, you're going to be able to manipulate your downward pressure, your arm speed, and the machine speed. All of these are going to affect the level of cut and clarity you get. Typically, as you increase downward pressure, you're also going to be increasing cut. Likewise, if you increase machine speed, using a higher speed is going to result in more cut. One of the most common mistakes that a beginner is going to make throughout this process is moving the machine too quickly. Using a slow arm speed is key, as it means the compound and pad will have plenty of time to work against the paint, therefore removing the paint and removing defects at the same time. If you move too quickly, the pad and the polish is not going to have enough time to do its work and you're not going to see the results you're looking for. The next thing to consider is your working area. You want to work in roughly a two foot by two foot area when you're working on large flat panels like this. On more obscure shaped panels, you've got to get a little creative, but you want to be sure that for each pass you make, you're overlapping at least 50% or so with the previous pass. We typically make four to six passes throughout the correction process. We find that this range uh, often produces the best results. However, this is something you can fine tune on your own to see what works best for you. So all of these variables, machine speed, downward pressure, arm speed, number of passes, the size of your working area, they all affect the results you're going to get. And all of them can be changed and tweaked to produce the results you're looking for. So we've just finished compounding half of the panel. And as you'll notice, the majority of the original defects have been removed, but we're left with a very hazy finish. This is known as micromarring and is very common when using a heavy cutting compound and microfiber pad. Luckily, this is easily removed with a polishing step, which we'll get to right now. In order to remove the micro-marring and haze left by the compounding process, we're going to be using Optimum's Hyper Spray Polish on a white Lake Country polishing pad. When polishing, we're going to use very similar techniques to the compounding process. However, we typically use a lighter downward pressure and a slower machine speed. This, again, can be tweaked to produce the best results for you. You want to continue to use slow, overlapping passes. However, you may need fewer passes than you did with the correction process because the marring is relatively light compared to the swirls and scratches we started with. We've just finished the polishing process, and as you can see, all of the micro marring and haze has been successfully removed, and we're left with a clear and almost defect-free finish. All right, guys, hope your results turned out as nicely as ours did. Thanks for watching. This is Zach McGovern for DetailedImage.com. Oh, <laughs>